it is today. Think of all the consequences in terms of med medicine, health, transport, and the like, all of the things that are dear to your heart. Why has prices so high? Lack of supply. We currently have a current undersupply of housing in this country, which based on lots of figures, not mine, ANZ, BIS, Shrapnel, et cetera, are 200,000 houses. We're undersupplied at about 60,000 a year. If we carry on like this, by 2030, we will have an undersupply of 1.4 million houses. Just think about that, 1.4 million houses. Where are people gonna live? Isn't it the basic right of people in any society to have access to affordable food, affordable shelter, affordable clothing, etc. It's a basic thing of life. And in this country, if we carry on like this with the massive undersupply, the housing affordability issue that we have at the moment is going to be a complete and utter crisis. The issues that come with that are quite interesting because the debate we have in this country about immigration is about what should the number be, 170,000, 180,000, 250,000. We've got to make sure that this country is attractive to 180,000 people who want to come here. Why would anybody want to come as a skilled worker from overseas to a country where they can't afford to live? They'll go elsewhere. Why come here if you can't afford a house? The look on people's faces when they actually make their investigations and come here and find out the cost of housing, it's ridiculous. So what we should do is uh, dense up, but we can't dense up because everybody says we're already too dense. Well, there you go. Los Angeles, the city of urban sprawl. 2,750 people per square kilometer. Sydney's 2,000, Brisbane's 918. Maybe we probably don't want to look like Shanghai. That's not the culture of Australia to be high rise like that, but all of this issue about densification and we're already overcrowded is complete and utter nonsense. So what should we be doing as an organization? We should be moving common sense into high-rise apartment development because that's the future. We've just pulled out of high-rise apartment development to focus on Greenfield because it's too hard. Because everybody knows these figures, the government know these figures, but local authority are the ultimate approval authority for these kinds of development and they just don't want it because the local residents, you know, no high, in, no, not too high in Kurang guy. It's called in in Sydney, and so we've pulled out because it's just too hard. The brain damage of dealing with this political process that is anti high rise development, we just can't deal with it anymore. Neither can our shareholders. What else can we do about it? Well, maybe we should have smaller houses. We definitely should have smaller houses. The McMansion thing. We've encouraged this culture where people want massive houses. We occupy new houses at the rate, the average size of a new house in Australia, by the way, is 260 square meters. That's the average new project home, 26 squares or thereabouts. Average three people per house, 83 square meters per person. Sweden, 29, UK, 32. 32 is not a good number. That's the reason I live here. But 83 square meters per person. Australian housing is not expensive on a per square meter basis. It's actually cheap. It's just that the houses are too big. Now, what we're seeing is this massive change in our buyer profile for our houses because people are over this. It's a simple proposition for them. This is how our salespeople talk to them now in plain English. Put a movie room on and all of the trappings that come with it. That will cost you $8,000 a year in repayments go to Hoyts. <laughs> Take the family. Why do you need five bedrooms when you only have one child? Why do you need all of this stuff? 83 square meters per person. It's ridiculous. We, have, we are educating our buyers that big is not best. They already know this. Glenn Stevens is talking about the move towards frugality and people not spending as much money. They're not doing it in the supermarkets. They're not doing it in the shops. That's why retailers are doing it tough. That's why household credit is not growing, because people are tightening their belts. They've had enough of too much debt. And we're seeing that in housing as well. What used to happen in housing is that somebody would come along, 
to us, sell their house at $450,000 and buy a new one for five hundred and fifty. dollars take on additional debt. They're not doing that anymore. They're selling the house for $450,000 and buying a new one for four hundred and fifty, dollars or even less to repay debt. Less debt and I get my life back. It's a lifestyle choice. I can have five bedrooms. I can have the formal dining room that we use once a year, or I can have a life. It's a simple equation. And people are making that choice. But, and this is the big but, we are leading by example in giving people this choice, dealing with the affordability issue. This is a single story house that we have at Highlands, at Craigieburn in Melbourne, the top selling residential development in the country last year. Very proud of it. Three bedroom, two bathroom, 145 square meters, a starter home. Now, when I say to the, my brother's a property developer in England, builds, builds houses, I say the 145 square meter starter home, that is their executive model. You know, even that by international standards is still big. Almost 50 square meters a person. Selling like hotcakes. Three years ago, if we'd have put that out, people would have said three bedrooms. Sorry, can't do that. The shame factor of ha only having three bedrooms. The shame. I won't be able to have my friends around to dinner because I've only got three bedrooms. <laughs> Whereas now it's, they've moved on. Nobody cares. It's just get me what I can afford. Let me start somewhere and move on. We've even got offers where we can tack on a fourth bedroom after a while at a fixed price. A lot of people... They take it up, but they'll never do it because they learn to live in the three bedrooms and it's fine. There's only three of us and, gee, this is actually okay. We've got a two-story house. This is in North Lakes in Brisbane, Australia's second largest selling residential development last year after Highlands. $400,000 for a two-story house. This has taken us a, a lot of time in innovation with the builders to get these products on the ground in terms of building materials, uh, cost of uh, construction and so on, because they are affordable and high quality. If you go into these developments, we're actually very proud to sell them because affordable used to mean cheap and nasty. Affordable now means quality as well. This is quality product that people are very, very happy to live in. 400,000, four-bedroom house, pretty good, selling very, very well. Some state governments, they get this. The Victorian government, and this, I'm not just saying this because I'm here today and John Brumby's been on the stage today, they get it. They are encouraging us to do this because they want us, Melbourne to be an affordable place to live. Because it's a, if it's affordable, people will come here. The big change we've seen with our buyers, particularly overseas buyers in the last five years, people used to think this way. I get the job, I go there because of the job, I buy the house. What they do now? They find the house that they can afford and get the job. That's why people are coming to Melbourne, because housing is affordable. Pound for pound, it is much more affordable than the rest of the country because they embrace this with open arms. The state government, the Growth Areas Authority, local government, they're all working with us. Sadly, not all state governments get this. At this stage, I would normally put up the New South Wales, how bad is that slide? And it is. But even they have been surpassed by the people north of them, where in four out of 20 of our projects in southeast Queensland, we can build these houses. In 16, we can't, because we're not allowed to do blocks of land with a freestanding house below 300 square meters, even though people want to buy them. Why is that? Local government, why is that? It's because of we like it the way it is. Small lots mean small houses, which may mean that our residents might have somebody living next door that they might not feel is quite desirable. The snobbery that comes into all of this in the decision-making at local government level is just obscene. How ridiculous is this? We want to put affordable housing on the ground, and we're not allowed to, because there's, there's just no strategy nationally to do this. Which brings me to my last slide. The big solution. It's about vision, strategy, implementation, and outcomes. What do we have now? Demand driven by the federal, with population, baby bonuses, immigration, supply dealt with at the state level. None of them talk to each other. And then you have the local government that is the ultimate approval authority. 
the housing approval numbers, building approval numbers when they, uh, they come out, you can just see what's going on. It is getting harder and harder and harder because the local 